This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. So, I want to talk about well, uh, what's called the problem of biological individuality. And uh, I'm not going to offer a solution to the problem. I'm nowhere near that far down the, down the road. I want to think about what the problem is. Uh, I haven't actually even got a statement of the problem, but I'm at least groping towards a statement of the problem. And, 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 and I think I can, I can show that many of the typical statements of the problem are inadequate or uh, at best incomplete anyway. <coughs> so the thought, if I understand it correctly, is something like this. Okay, so, so suppose, for the sake of argument, suppose we know what life is, okay, as opposed to long. So maybe it has to do with some sort of cell organization, or cell maintenance, or maybe it's to do with metabolism, or maybe to do with or chemistry, or with uh, 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 autonomy, or immune system, or something like that. Suppose, suppose we know we know what life is, okay? and suppose we also know where life is, where life is present, that is, which regions of space-time contain life, and which ones don't. So, uh, for example, I'm sure you all recognize the uh, yellow many-headed slime hold. That's clearly a region where life is present, all right, uh, but. There's something more that we want to know about this region. Uh, namely, what organisms are there in that region? That is, how, how does life divide into living things? Now, for there to be life, I take this for there to be living things, or as the philosophers of biology like to say, uh, biological individuals. Fancy word. I, I, I think that my biological individual is just a fancy way of saying living thing. Okay. And the fundamental living things, I suppose, are organisms. And maybe living things besides organisms, certain so parts of organisms, for example, or certain groups of organisms. But I think organisms are the basic unit of life. I, I, that's probably controversial, as everything interesting is. I, 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 I'm not sure what would follow if that were false. Uh, 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 I won't go into that. So I'll just talk about organisms. Uh, you can take this to be talk about the the principal or fundamental units of life, or living things, or biological individuals, whatever they might be. Uh, it's important to know what organisms there are, how life divides into living things, for a number of purposes in biology, which are not very competent to, to spell out, but for example, it's, you might want to know whether you've got a case of reproduction or simply a case of growth. So is this organism simply spreading it out, spreading out through space, or is it actually producing new or a new generation of organisms? That can be very important in uh, uh, the biology. And you might want to know whether you've got a single complex organism in a certain location, or whether you've got a group or colony of smaller and simpler organisms. Uh, here's for a simple example, for a sort of garden example. So the, the strawberry plant spreads out and produces these runners which take root. Uh, is it reproducing or is it only spreading and getting bigger? Uh, I call it, I'm not sure whether this is the right technical term, but it's in spreading, don't know. Uh, it's a case of reproduction if it results in a group of organisms. Uh, it's merely growth if it results in a single organism. Okay, very simple case. Of uh, uh, why it matters in biology. And of course, if you want to do your evolutionary biology, it's very important to know whether you've got a new generation or merely a case of growth. So, uh, what is the problem of biological individuality? This, what does it mean to ask uh, how life divides into, into other things? How should the problem be stated? This is what I'm interested in. Uh, what question does the problem Asked. Well, philosophical problems usually take the form of questions. It's, it's, it's very important to know, I think, what the question is. Uh, what sort of theory or principle would count as an answer to the question? Uh, or again, th th there are various puzzles about biological individuality, such as the slime molds. We've, we've, we've heard a, about a, a, a number of them uh, 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 yesterday. And 
no doubt more today. So the, the swine mills and the, the colonial cephalosaurus and the strawberry plants and the aspen groves and the uh, 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 endosymbionts and all of these cases. All, 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 these are puzzling cases. Okay. What is the general puzzle that these cases exemplify? So these are the questions that I would like to answer to. I haven't yet got answers to them, uh, but I'm groping towards answers. All right, here's one proposal that's suggested by the way I introduced the problem, which is that it's to do with drawing boundaries. So the problem is how to draw boundaries. <coughs> we know where life is, okay? We know what life is, and we know which regions are based on contained life. So, okay, so, so, so the problem is how to draw boundaries within that region between one organism and another one. Uh, that's the problem of biological individuality, perhaps. Uh, now, I think this proposal is at least tendentious. It presupposes a very important, well, at uh, any rate, a uh, 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 controversial claim, namely that the boundaries of any organism have to align within the life-containing regions. That an organism cannot have, cannot extend beyond the uh, regions that contain life, uh, which is controversial, I think. Uh, for example, uh, this is, it looks like something that, uh, I would call it a tree. A tree is an organism, a little not a biological individual. It's not alive, it's dead. So it, it, it seems to lie without, outside of the uh, space-time regions that contain life. Okay, this, it was living, but it's not living any longer, or so it might seem, anyway, at least. Uh, if that is the case, then the trees numbers extend beyond the, that is its temporal boundaries, extend beyond the regions that contain Okay. Um, that's, that claim is controversial. Because Aristotelians will say that the tree no longer exists and after it seems to be alive. Uh, but we don't want to presuppose that sort of contentious metaphysical claim simply by the way we ask the question uh, of biological individuality. Uh, another, uh, okay, another case of the same sort of thing. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so it presupposes that an organism cannot exist in a lifeless condition mm -hmm. as, a, a, as a corpse or a cadaver or a whatever. Okay. Um, it also presupposes that an organism cannot have spatial parts that are no longer alive. This is a depressingly familiar picture to any gardener. Uh, the, 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 at least parts of a snail's shell don't seem to be alive or not alive any longer. That they're not nourished by its blood supply. Uh, uh, they can't be metabolized if it's snail blood short of calcium or something uh, like that. They, 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 yeah. uh, another case, the, the, the sheep's horns, uh, but some of them are, 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 are living tissue, but, but, but a lot of it is not living tissue any longer, as far as I know. I'm not a sheep farmer, but that's how it seems to me. Or the, uh, the, the uh, magnificent tusks of this scary looking elephant uh, are not living tissue, not the other the, 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 the younger bits anyway. But, but, but you might think that the organism itself, the elephant, uh, includes the tusks all the way out to the, to the tip. All right, so it presupposes both that an organism is <coughs> in a lifeless condition and that an organism cannot have non-living spatial parts, both of which sound to me like contentious claims. It's not, this is not enough to tell us the boundaries of all the organisms. Okay. Uh, independent difficulty with this proposal. So that's, it, it, it's, it's, it won't tell us what organisms there are or how to count the organisms. And if you want to know how many offspring 
for example, a certain creature's got, you need to know how to count those offspring. And simply being able to draw the right boundaries between one organism and another one within the life containing regions is not enough to enable you to do that. So, for example, uh, suppose these are, this is the right, way, the right way to draw the boundaries. So the, the white region is the region that contains life. Uh, the shaded region does not contain life. Uh, this is not enough to enable us to know how many organisms or organisms <coughs> there are. So there might be that one, the one that's stained black on this microscope slide. Uh, but, there might be, but there might also be uh, those three smaller organisms inside the larger one. They might be gut bacteria or some of the endosymbionts or something like that. Okay. Uh, there are other possibilities as well. Maybe that these smaller ones themselves, two, three, and four, compose uh, an organism with three parts. Number five, let's say. So it may be that there's one and there's five. It may be that two, three, and four are themselves organisms, or maybe that they're not. Uh, so there are several possibilities there. It may also be that there's uh, an even larger organism composed of one together with two, three, and four. Call it six, and it may be that there's that, that, that one composed of one and two, or one, two, and three, or one, two, and four. But there are lots of other possibilities. Uh, and simply knowing where the boundaries lie doesn't tell us which of these is the case, and hence does not tell us what organisms there are and how many there are. Okay, uh, here's an improved proposal so that, that uh, 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 the suggestions that well, maybe the problem is what determines the spatial temporal boundaries of any organism, uh, whether or not those boundaries lie within the life contained regions, something like that. This proposal, I think, is also tendentious. It also presupposes uh, contestable uh, metaphysical claims. It presupposes that different organisms can never share the same spatio-temporal boundaries. Okay. So even if we knew the spatio-temporal boundaries of all the <coughs> organisms, that still wouldn't tell us how many organisms there are. Because it may be, for all we know anyway, that uh, 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 Two organisms might share the very same spatial temporal boundaries. There, maybe there could be, this is, this is, this is fanciful, maybe there could be ghostly organisms, organisms made of some sort of subtle matter that, 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 that can interpenetrate with ordinary matter. Okay, so so maybe, there, maybe there could be some sort of ghostly man that might be located right here with these boundaries for some reason or other. Uh, in that case, knowing what my boundaries are, and, and knowing that I'm an organism, that, that, that wouldn't be able to know how many organisms there are here. That's fanciful, but uh, uh, here's a real uh, philosopher of biology, Jack Wilson. He thinks that there are different sorts of organisms, or different sorts of biological individuals, which can differ only in their mobile properties. They, they may be physically, <coughs> Identical, they may even have the very same uh, uh, spatial temporal boundaries, but they differ in their modal properties. That is, they differ in what sort of uh, what sort of thing they could survive, uh, and under what they differ in what conditions they, uh, they differ in what has to be the case for them to exist. Okay. Uh, so, for example, what he calls functional individuals and genetic individuals. Okay. Uh, a functional individual. Exists just if, if, if it's got the right functions. A genetic individual exists just if it's got the right sort of ancestry or something like that. I don't know the details. Uh, but they can coincide not only in space but also in time. Now, I don't know whether any other philosophers of, of, of biology share that view. Uh, if this is something that we want to take seriously, then we can't uh, state the problem in this way. All right. Here is the what I take to be the most common statement, the most common way of stating the problem of, of biological individuality. Okay. So it's to say what it is to be an organism, uh, as opposed to an organism, or something like that. 
uh, here's a quotation uh, from Pollock, it's to define the biological individual, or again, it's to find necessary and sufficient conditions for membership of the class. Okay. I hasten to, to add that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to single out Ellen for, uh, 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 Ellen for criticism, and I, I, I use her, uh, these quotations as an example, because I find them particularly clear and helpful, even though I disagree. Here's another example, a, 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 a case of the same thing. Um, this is, let's see, it's um, um, Wilson Barker in, in the Stanford Encyclopedia article on, on, on biological individuality. They say the problem consists of these three questions. Uh, first, what makes something a biological individual? Second, what is the nature of being a biological individual? Third, what is the best explicated definition of the phrase biological? Uh, we might well wonder what exactly these questions mean, and above all, what the difference is between one, two, and three. They don't elaborate. Uh, but leaving that aside, it looks like uh, 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 another way of asking what is it to be an organism, as opposed to a non-organism. So that's the most common sort of thought. Uh, I don't think this is adequate, this way of stating the problem. Uh, it won't by itself tell us what organisms there are, or how many organisms there are, even if we know all the facts about what life is and where life is present. Okay. Even if we know all the relevant sort of background uh, 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 facts. And that's because we need it will enable us to count organisms only if, we've, if we're given a list of candidates, that is a list of, only if we know what things there are that may or may not be organisms. Then we can apply our account of what to be an organism to each of those and see which ones satisfy them, which ones don't, and then we can count upon the organisms. But we need to know what the, we need to know, so to speak, to, knowing what a biological individual is will tell us what biological individuals there are only if we know what individuals of all, uh, generally, that, that there are, biological or not. Uh, but, and I kind of the difference between organisms and non-organisms organisms provides no such list of candidates. So, uh, for example, uh, we might, uh, uh, an account of what an organism is would presumably tell us whether the object composed of those two men is or is not an organism or a biological individual. I'm sorry that this, that this example is dated, but I, uh, I couldn't resist it. Okay, so, so, so the thing composed of Tony Blair and George Bush may or may not be an organism, depending on what exactly it is to be an organism, but uh, 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 that doesn't tell us whether there is a thing composed of those two men. Okay, and whether there is or isn't is uh, a controversial metaphysical question. Or again, to use my uh, 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 not so common example, uh, we don't know what candidates there are in this case. So at any rate, simply knowing where the boundaries lie doesn't tell us what candidates there are for being an organism. It doesn't tell us whether there is something composed of one, two, or three, for example. So uh, to, to know what organisms there are, we need not just an account of what it is to be an organism, together with all of the, all of the uh, 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 philosophical and controversial facts about what life is present. We also need an account of what candidates there are, that is, what material things there are that may or may not count as organisms. I'm assuming that organisms are material things, and maybe that's, the, if, if, if that's questionable, uh, then put some more general term in uh, for that. That is, what we need is what we might call an ontology of material things in general. seem to be presupposing, uh, or anyway, making certain assumptions about uh, what material things there are. Certain, they're presupposing a certain uh, ontology of material things. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I think that they tend to presuppose uh, what we might call the principle of universal composition. What that means is, is, is that for any smaller things that we've got, okay, 
uh, there is always some bigger thing made up or composed of those smaller things. And this is the definition of composed, which I won't go through. Uh, so, for example, if there's such a thing as uh, my left foot and my left foot, this glass, and the Eiffel Tower, if those three things exist, then there's also a thing composed of my left foot, this glass, and the Eiffel Tower, a very large, uh, spatially scattered object made up mostly of cast iron and other materials as well. So that seems to be presupposed. Now, the, the principle of composition uh, may or may not be true. Uh, in metaphysical discussions, this principle is highly controversial. Okay, probably most metaphysicians, possibly anyway, reject it. Uh, it's not normally presupposed without any argument. Uh, you, there are actually lots of arguments in the, in the metaphysical literature, both for and against the principle of universal composition. Okay. So it's, 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 it's a, a, a battlefield, if you want to get into physics. So uh, philosophers of biology tend to presuppose the principle of universal composition, uh, not only without giving any argument for it, but without even mentioning it. Uh, they also tend to presuppose, I think, uh, the ontology of temporal forms, also known as four dimensions. Okay, so uh, 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 a temporal part of an object is something that, so to speak, takes something that it's, it's a part of an object that takes up all of that object for as long as that part exists, something like that. So, for example, uh, Barry Manilow's nose is a part of him, but not temporal part. Now, many of you are too young to remember Barry Manilow, actually. But then, yeah, so, so, so his nose is a part of him, but not a temporal part, because it's too small. It doesn't take up all of him while it exists. Okay. Uh, uh, by contrast, the first half of a football match, or the last minute, minute of, a, of a football match, it, 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 uh, if it exists, is a temporal part of the match, because it takes up all of the match for as long as that part exists. Okay. This is a really splendid piece of sports photography, but I wonder who decided that women had to play with a pink ball. <laughs> okay, so the Temporal Parts Ontology uh, says, sorry, says uh, uh, not just that things have temporal parts, which is controversial, but that all persisting objects are composed of arbitrary Number of parts. So this means that for any period of time during which I exist, I'll use myself as an example, right? uh, uh, any period of time during which I exist, whether it's continuous or discrete, whether it's momentary or extended, right? any, any, any way of slicing up my career, so to speak, uh, 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 is the location of a concrete object which is a temporal part. So there is such an object as my first half, my first minute, my last hour, uh, 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 the temporal part of the composed of my first minute and my last hour, and so on. And then one just in this right now and then going out of this. Okay, uh, uh, the ontology of temporal parts of four dimensions is also a highly controversial metaphysical thesis, and there again, there's lots of debates about it, many arguments both for and against. Okay, so philosophers of biology tend to presuppose these two principles, universal composition and the ontology of temporal parts, together, put them together, and then you get what you might call, what I like to call, uh, a principle of material plenitude, uh, which, so, so it, it, they are, roughly speaking, that every matter-filled region of space-time Exactly contains at least one material thing. Okay. Never mind the, the, the publication is, 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 is not important. So whenever you've got some stuff uh, spread out in space and time, you've got uh, uh, a concrete particular or an individual or a material thing located just there. Okay. Uh, here's a quotation from Jack Wilson. He says, uh, all earthly life or any span of it can rightly be considered to take that to be a statement of principle of uh, material plenitude. Now, again, uh, Wilson is very commendably mentions that he's assuming this principle. Uh, never gives any argument for it. 
Now, my purpose in saying all this is not to criticize philosophers of biology for making contentious metaphysical assumptions without giving any argument for it. That, 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 that's not my complaint. Right? I'm not making a complaint at all. Uh, 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 I mean, it's true that they, I think, generally made these, made, made these assumptions without arguing for them or even being aware that they're making the assumptions. But my purpose is rather to uh, grant them this assumption and see what follows from it. And, and, and I think it has interesting and important implications for the way the problem of biological individual individuality has to be stated. In particular, I think it means that the usual statement of it is not adequate. So that's, that's the, uh, the main point that I want to make. My last point. So, uh, uh, right, so here's one implication. Uh, of the principle is that, sorry, this, this is a, 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 a bit of a review. So to know what organisms, what organisms are of, we need an account of what it is to be an organism and an ontology of material things in general. And that ontology is usually the principle of material plenty or something like it. Okay, that's not that. So uh, here's an implication of the principle of plenty. Okay, first of all, the, it, it implies that there are vastly more organisms or biological individuals than biologists say there are. And the reason is, 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 is that the boundaries of an organism, both spatial and temporal, are not exactly precise. So here's, here's my toy organism. Okay, if we ask exactly where are its spatial, are, are its spatial boundaries, they, they are, are exactly, exactly which region of space or space-time does it occupy? It's impossible to say exactly which region. Went right down to uh, 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 infinitely many decimal places. Okay. There, there's more than one correct way of saying exactly where its boundaries lie. Okay, and for each of those equally correct ways of drawing the boundary, there's a different space-time, a different region, and hence by the by the principle of material time to do different material thing. Okay. So uh, it implies that there are uh, bazillions of living organisms standing here right now which differ only very minutely. So uh, the implication is that when biologists ask how many animals or how many organisms or how many biological individuals are there standing up here, they mean they're not they don't mean well how many are there, strictly speaking? How many are there really? They mean how many non overlapping individuals are there, or, 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 or something like that. They're not counting by identity, as the medicine say. They're counting by uh, non overlap or something, something like that. This is not a problem, it's just something that uh, the philosophers of biology need to be aware of, which I've never actually seen mentioned in the literature. Okay. Uh, this is the more important point. Okay? Uh, uh, the account of what it is to be an organism, in order to do the work that it's supposed to do, will have to tell us what an organism's spatial and temporal boundaries are. That is, it will have to tell us, so, so, so to, 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 to say what determines an organism's temporal boundaries is to say, in effect, what its persistence conditions are, what its identity over time consists. If you don't do that, your account of what it is to be an organism will not enable you to count and uh, individuate the organisms, given the principle of plenty. So, for example, this is, uh, 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 the principle of plenty implies that there is such a thing as my first path. Okay. Uh, now, uh, 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 my first half is an object that would seem to satisfy most accounts of what it is to be an organism. So, for example, it can be produced. Right? Uh, it belongs to the right sort of reproductive lineage. Uh, it has the right sort of functional autonomy, I suppose, anyway. Uh, it has its own metabolism and immune system. Uh, and so on. Uh, and yet, nobody would count my first half as an organism. There are, of course, lots of other infilling and other temporal, temporal parts of it that are also not organisms, uh, and yet would, be, would count as organisms.
organisms are, are, are on the usual account of what it is to be an organism. So, 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 so we need an account of what it is to be an organism that will rule around my first half, for example, uh, as an organism. Uh, likewise, it will have to rule out the object composed of all of me, all of me except my left pinky. Right? That's, it, it can also be produced, like my left pinky complement can be produced. It has, it has an immune system. It has the right sort of reproductive lineage <coughs> and so on, but it's not an organism. The right sort of biological division. Um, here is an analogy which may or may not be helpful. A, 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 a different. Uh, this is a case in which the same phenomenon occurs, but 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 but, 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 but in a different uh, case. So when you read discussions of, of, of personal identity, uh, the analog of what it is to be an organism is what it is to be a person. And the usual accounts of personhood uh, say that to be a person, as opposed to a non-person, is to have certain special mental properties. Uh, so, for example, here's the very famous quotation from Locke, 1694. He says, a person is a thinking, intelligent being that has reason and reflection and can consider itself as itself the same thinking thing at different times and places. So if, you've, if you can do that, if, you've got, if you're intelligent and able to consider yourself as persisting through time, then you're a person. This is how it's efficient. Okay. I'm calling this a three-dimensional account of personhood because uh, it presupposes that the ontology of temporal forms is false, as I'll explain in a moment. Okay. Uh, this sort of definition of personhood sounds right. It's so what it is to be a person, like to have the right mental properties. Uh, it's, it can't be right given the principle uh, and the reason is that, uh, well, my first half, for example, would satisfy that definition of person. It's, it's got reason and reflection and consider itself as itself a different, the same thing and thing in different times and places. Uh, uh, according to the principle of plenitude, a person is composed of more or less momentary temporal parts or stages. is a more or less momentary being that has those special mental properties that distinguish people from non-people, right? So uh, uh, a more or less momentary thing that's intelligent and self-conscious and so on, that's uh, a person stage. Okay, so to say what a per but, but a person stage is not a person, right? There are, uh, what you say <coughs> is, is, is a continuous series of person stages coming into being and going and, and being replaced by new ones, right? An infinite, an infinite number of even you know, during any finite period, there aren't infinitely many people. Right? There are just, those are just parts of the, of, the, of the one person. So to say what a person is, we need to say <coughs> when person stages compose a person. Okay? In addition to saying what it is to be a person stage. Uh, so we need to give conditions of what we call conditions of personal identity all the time. So here is an account of what it is to be a person that uh, 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 would be this required. A person, a person at the four dimensions. So the, the so-called three-dimensionalist accounts say that a person is a, a being with certain special mental properties. Uh, Four-dimensionalist account says something like this. A person is, this is Lewis, David hey, Lewis's uh, 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 definition. He says, a person is a maximal aggregate of psychologically interconnected person states. Uh, that means it's a being, each of whose stages are being composed of person stages. Each of those stages is psychologically connected to every other one, and it's not a part of any larger assumption of being. Okay. The, the, the technical details don't matter. My point is that to say what it is to be a person, you have to say not just what special mental properties distinguish people from non people, but you have to say uh, 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 you have to give the persistence conditions, or say what determines the the temporal boundaries of a person. Otherwise, you get all of these, you get way too many people, such as the first half of a person, or, 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 or the momentary states of a person. <coughs> so, uh, getting back to the philosophy of biology, uh, the usual accounts of what it is to be an organism that I've read anyway are three dimensional. That is, they tell us. Uh, 
how organisms differ from non-organisms in terms of reproduction or immune system or uh, uh, metabolism or whatever. Uh, they don't tell us how to specify organisms' temporal or spatial boundaries. So, for example, uh, like I said, it's like the ability to reproduce, uh, belonging to the rest of reproductive lineage, having the rest of a functional autonomy, having its own metabolism and immune system. Uh, these things would, would, uh, are true of my first half, for example, uh, or various organism stages. So that can't be what it is to be an organism if the principle of Pantu is correct. Okay. To say what it is to be an organism, we would need to, say, we, we, we need to specify uh, what determines the spatial and temporal boundaries of an organism. So uh, 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 just to show that, to, to give an example of uh, 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 what I mean, the, 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 this is the uh, longer passage from Ellen from, from Clark for the Cordova. She says, the problem I treat here is the problem of biological. Yes. I'm nearly okay. finished. Yes. Okay. My last slide. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So the problem of biological individuality that she's interested in is one of finding necessary and sufficient conditions for membership of the class rather than of finding identity conditions for particular organisms. In other words, my concern is not whether my definition will serve to re-identify one biological individual over space and or time. So my claim is that given the uh, principle of plenitude, that is the ontology of material things that's presupposing these discussions, uh, that's uh, 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 an account of being an organism does need to specify those things exactly. Uh, it may be that, uh, well, of course, maybe not all philosophers of biology are presupposing the principle of material magnitude. Uh, in that case, uh, they, need to sell, they do need to, well, there has to be some principle of, uh, some claim, some, some, some presupposition about what material things there are, uh, or else their account of what is to be an organism will not enable us to count and individuate the organisms. All right, that's uh, the end. Thank you.